Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for being here this morning. Um, I've been given this great task of talking about B2B e-commerce trends and insights 2024. Um, there's nothing quite like the smell of freshly baked bread, which is exactly what this talk is today as of quarter to nine. So bear with, there's quite a few slides to go through. Um, th these are the main uh, topics that we're going to cover today. I'm going to run through the slides quite quickly. So, but please, I'm around all afternoon. If you want to talk about any specifics in more detail, please grab me. Um, uh, I'm quite friendly. Um, so, uh, my name is Tig. Uh, I'm a solution specialist at, at Monsoon, not the clothing company, the e-commerce agency. Um, I've been with Monsoon since uh, 2019. I started my Magento journey in 2010. Uh, I was a full stack uh, Magento developer then. So yeah, I've, uh, uh, one of the reasons I've lost my hair. Uh, <laughs> um, but we're still, we're, we're still here, we're still alive, and, and thank you for being here. Right, away we go. Of course we're going to talk about AI. AI is everywhere, it's part of our lives, we have to get used to it, it's been around for a long time, it's just much more prominent nowadays. Um, but the first thing I would just want to cover is in general, you know, when we talk about AI and something is AI, well, it's an application of AI. Um, and it's, it's very important to, to, to understand that. Um, machine learning being one of the uh, most common applications of AI in e-commerce. Um, now, it's okay, don't get out your magnifying glass. We're not gonna go through all of these tools, but this diagram came out late last year and it's, you, know, you can Google it and, and zoom in if you want. But it just shows how much applications of AI are now part of our lives. And this one stood out for me because we have our little friend here, Adobe Sensei, um, which is part of the Adobe co Commerce uh, product. Um, and we'll go into that in a, a little bit later. Um, I was recently on the Adobe tour um, uh, in London, and they produced this slide. And we have, uh, just, to, just to show you where Adobe Commerce fits in, in the whole picture, it fits in under the Adobe Experience Cloud Suite. We've got Adobe Commerce over here, and now we've got its close, very close cousin, uh, Adobe Experience Manager. And we'll come that, back to that a little bit later on. But a lot of these tools now have applications of AI. It's just part and parcel. Um, we won't go into them in, in great detail, but one of them, for example, is Adobe Express. I don't know if you've, you've played with it. There is a community, a, there is a free version, but they launched this, um, what, their version of what's called generative AI, Firefly. So have a little go. You, you, can, you, can, you can generate beautiful imagery um, and expand on it, and it's, it's, it's very, very clever how it works. But Firefly is an example of generative AI, which is based on machine learning models. And machine learning is an application of AI. So if we take, uh, these are just some brief examples of AI in, 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 in e-commerce, fraud detection and prevention in, in, in uh, payment gateways. Personalization, product recommendations is, is, is a good example of that. Uh, customer service, we've got chatbots, data analytics and, and forecasting, content creation, I've just uh, mentioned Adobe Express, and search. Search is a very good example. If we take some of our technology partners um, in, the, uh, in the Adobe commerce sphere, uh, for example, Clayview. Clayview is a very good example. They use different applications of AI. They use natural language processing. They use machine learning. And they use product recommendation systems. Um, and back into the Adobe Commerce product, we obviously have uh, the Sensei product. So there are just some examples. Um, OK, quickly moving on. Uh, this is one I'm, I'm personally interested in. It's this whole idea of the least number of clicks to reorder. Um, so, the user is, so we talk about the B2B journey, the user is there to fulfill a task. It might not be such a, 
a personal journey because they, they are at a job, they've got to get this order in. Um, and we know in B2B, if you have a pay on account, uh, there's a, sh a set shipping method and fee, and there is a set delivery address, there's no actual need for a checkout. So the cart page becomes the actual fin final page of the checkout, enter your PO number and place order. Where things get a little bit more interesting, and this is something we're developing at, at Monsoon, we have an internal R&D team. And we, we're constantly looking at ways of, well, how can we make the journey, that reorder journey better? And this is just one thing we've started doing. When you view an order, rather than clicking the reorder at the top, you can actually reorder each individual line item. Um, uh, and that's quite useful because in B2B, uh, if we take the food industry, for example, your, your previous order could have had 50, 60 items in it but your next order might not be that long. So what's the point in adding them all to the cart and then having to delete half of them? Uh, this is something very interesting we've done for uh, a client in the UK. Um, obviously out of the box we've got wish list or requisition lists, what most people call favorites. What this client has done is they have taken all of their sales over the last eight weeks and this is the most popular products. Actually, they list them in alphabetical order. The filtering, they manage themselves. So they can control all of this in the actual admin panel, including the, 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 that time span that they want to go back and you know, order that, the list of products. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a unique idea, and we see real um, uh, there's a lot more you can do with this. It's just a different way of looking at your favorites list. Uh, this, is, this is something we're, we're, we're currently looking into, and it's this idea of automatic reordering. And uh, those of you who, who love stock inventory, and you, you, you'll recognize what um, a power list. It's a, a, a periodic automatic placement, I think that's what it means. Um, but this is, the, this is the key bit. It's, so let's take a restaurant and they know roughly that they're going to have, you know, two, three hundred servings of chips a week or, or, or every few days. So they know they need to order, let's say, 50 bags of chips. Um, and depending on the frequency of the delivery, you can determine, well, you know, allow for a little bit of buffer. Um, I need 25 bags of chips uh, for this product every time. Every time it's a delivery, just, just go ahead and do it. I shouldn't have to, if we go back here, for example, this is always set to one. But what if you had another one beside it, which is your par list? So you could have your top 100 products um, and you can define which product you say, well, this is a regular product. And this is what I normally order. So this is, you know, the one, and then this would have the, your regular order. So you can just go, yeah, I want that one, that one, that one, that one. So it's, it's, it's that forecasting. It's, it's that, you know, it's taking the kind of the hard work out of it. And then there's, there's an argument to say, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> just schedule the order. Go ahead. The, the downside of that is if it's automatically generated the order, you haven't had a chance in this example of cross-selling. Um, and these guys do, do it really well. I, I don't have an example today, but they cross-sell underneath a product. What we call, they call it uh, an injected product, where there might be another flavor of a particular product and they actually cross-sell it underneath. Um, so it's quite, uh, it's quite effective. Okay, uh, briefly, my account self-service, okay? These are all the givens. This is hardly a trend. This is something uh, you should be doing. Obviously, in B2B land, we have complexity around uh, ERP systems. So a lot of this is hooked into to ERP, it's fine. But what else can we be doing? You know, B2B has become more like B, B2C. You know, we want that personalized dashboard. 
um, you know, we've got segmentation, we've got dynamic blocks, um, we've got targeted home pages. Um, so there's no reason why we can't do this. But we all know the big problem, and that's the maintenance of it. It's easy to get this stuff up and running, but then it's the maintenance of it because it takes resources. But preferred page after login, that could be a, a, your own personalized home page. It could have been that your usual. Uh, flexible payment options, we'll come to that in a minute. Account inquiry forms, more, you know, more personalized forms. It could be a link into a, a ticketing system. Um, enhanced security. So that part of self-service that's dealing with money, for example, you may want to lock down that further with uh, two-factor authentication. And then sustainability. You know, it's good to, you know, we're all trying to save the planet, yes. Uh, and it's good to try and tell your customers what you are doing uh, for them. Okay, account payments. Right, yes, this is the standard set. Most B2B head down the, the, the pay on account. But cash customers, you know, customers that are, are, are starting out will be paid by card. This is the interesting one. This is the, the kind of, the, the, there's a whole new clutter of, of, of providers of open banking out there. Um, and I'm going to touch on that in, in, in a second. But this whole idea of self-service, my account self-service, and this ability to be able to, to settle your account I know many accounts might be direct debit, but some are not. So at the end of the month, um, you, you can't see it here, but you know, there's a couple of invoices here that are outstanding. So why can't we have you know, tick box, tick box, pay? So rather than the accounts team having to chase for money, well, you're really encouraging people to settle their in outstanding invoices online. This is an example of one we've done uh, with, a, with a company in the UK. So their outstanding balance is here. Uh, how much do you want to pay today? Your um, existing cards pay. That's, that's a direct integration in with a payment gateway called JudaPay. Um, uh, and they can, they can do the same on the checkout as well, where they might not be able to pay the full amount, but you're offering at least pay for the goods. Um, right. So. EcoSpend, this is the company we're working with, uh, again, in the, in the UK. An example of a, a company here in Ireland, uh, I think it's set, set up in Ireland, it's called NuaPay. Uh, but it's this concept of open banking. So I think if, you've, you know, if, you've, if you're familiar with paying off a uh, credit card, it's quite common now, they'll give you that option to pay through open banking, uh, through a current account. Um, but here's the biggest the biggest winner. Um, if we take pay by card, for example, um, especially in the UK, there's a big rise in the number of commercial cards and prepaid cards that are, that are on offer. But some of the transaction fees on that could be up to 2%. So if you take a thousand pound order, that's 20 quid. Like that's, that's insane if you're going up to 20, 30 million uh, online. With uh, open banking, 50p. Per transaction, so that could be, you know, ten grand order. Uh, so there's insane savings there, and we know B2B margins are, you know, it's small, so every penny counts. Um, but interestingly, <laughs> uh, this crowd, where they they went down the route of uh, 50 p per, tr per transaction, they've realised how much the company is spending, and now they're trying to negotiate <laughs> that fee, but. Um, there's a lot of players out there, um, and there is a lot of savings to be had. And that will be, uh, we're doing a direct integration in with uh, EcoSpend. Okay, quickly, order management system. Okay, we know Magento admin panel, um, we've got the, uh, this ability to be able to create sales orders. Uh, that's all fine. The admin panel, mm, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to, to expand on, to improve. Um, so what do we do? We built uh, an order management system website. So we actually built a storefront. Um, and this is after you log in. So this is a website, it's a portal. I, as a, as a client services user, I log in and this is what I see. So this is actually a website.
So I can see all the companies I search, um, and then I see everything about, all the information about that account. Um, where's all this information coming from? Well, it's coming from ERP. But it's really, really powerful. Um, because we know the front end of the site, and this is, this is um, using Hoover themes, it's incredibly easy to develop. Um, and the next, this is the uh, product listing page. So you can imagine the customer service representative, they've logged in, the customer's phoned in. So they're on the phone, and these, these orders take roughly about 50 seconds to do, and they're constantly coming in. They know they're regulars, they go into their product listing, they go into their usual, but for example here, they can see all their previous sales. And they can pull stuff in from around. For example, this is uh, in, in the pub industry, so they've, they've got slide-ins, to they know what, what's in that pub's calendar. So it could be a quiz, it could be an event coming up. Uh, so the customer representative is there trying to cross-sell as well. Uh, so this is quite a powerful system. Uh, another thing we've done for these guys is, so in the Magento admin panel, you've got this ability to log in as customer. But unfortunately, as you have to log into the admin panel first. So we've actually brought this onto the, the website. So if you could imagine a portal, um, I am customer services, I'm actually logging in as what's called a super user. And I, as, when you log in, rather than logging into a company, you can select any company. And this is really useful for, for customer services and also technical support, where a, um, a query comes in, customers not seeing pricing or they're not seeing products. Um, you can log in and actually then imitate them uh, on, on the storefront. Okay, our favorite topic, security and monitoring. We all love this, I know you're super excited. But we have to talk about it because it's still as relevant as ever. We know there is a patch release schedule. This, there's five um, what called security patches this, this, this year. And this one's quite difficult to explain to clients, but the, it's this versioning. It's actually a marketing versioning. Um, to, to anybody technical in the room, this is not proper semantic versioning, it's marketing versioning. And we have to understand what each number means. Um, and the least you have to be doing is your security patch release. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a must-do. And we're trying to come up with more innovative ways of you know, packaging up those releases so you don't have to worry about it, we'll just do it for you, rather than it being a headache uh, every time it gets released and it's coming out your support hours, all that. So we're, we're trying to d d come up with a better, a better plan. The annoying, little annoying thing is that that is called a patch release and that is called a security patch release, and they are slightly different. Um, and what's important is uh, that major release, well, that just means Magento 2. That will never change, hopefully. Uh, and the minor release, there's no sign of anything like uh, a, a new minor release at the minute. But these two are changing. We're currently on 247. P1 comes out next week. So it's important to um, understand the, the differences. 2FA, look, it's a no-brainer. Everyone should have it switched on. But 2FA, when you switch on 2FA, it does have an effect on API connectivity. There are different ways of uh, authenticating. Um, if you switch on 2FA, this is the only method that you can use, and it is the, the most secure method of authentication. We had an example recently where a shipping, a fulfillment um, software was using, it only used basic authentication come in and pull orders out. And we said, unfortunately, you cannot no longer do that because we need 2FA. And there was talks about switching off 2FA. Uh, 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 uh. Don't do that. Monitoring and alerts. Let's discuss. So monitoring is great, but this is even more important. You can do all the monitoring you like, but it's the alerting. And who gets alerted? And how often do they get alerted? And how meaningful is the actual alert? So, Again, this is another project we've been doing. Um, all of these are you kind of given out of the box. Um, you'd expect all of those, but now we take it a little bit further. Um, 
and we try and capture. I'll give you an example. We, uh, one of our client sites went live. Everything was going grand. The next day, what was noticed was emails were not being sent out because there was a piece of data being pulled into an email and that data had gone astray. So all of the testing, all of the UAT, nobody ever picked up on the fact that that piece of data might eventually go missing. Um, uh, so this stuff is really important. Um, so that's, uh, it, it's good to know, like, if you've got all of that implemented, you're not doing too bad. Um, so, uh, this is just another thing to be aware of. Uh, it kind of emphasizes the importance of keeping your software up to date. This is the latest uh, EU directive on cybersecurity. And now it doesn't affect every industry, but it's worth having a little look. You can go and check um, online. Uh, for example, if you're in the food sector and if you're of a certain size, there are certain guidelines you must follow. But one of them is having uh, the most up-to-date software. Um, so it's, it's important to do that. Okay, we're nearly there, folks. Um, here's another uh, pretty cool thing that we've, 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 we've been looking at uh, for, for another client here in Ireland. But... Um, the project was actually based in the UK. So this is uh, straight out of uh, Adobe Experience. Um, th th this diagram where uh, one of the most powerful features of uh, the platform is this ability to have multiple websites, stores, and as many store views as you want. That's great, um, but what you have to keep an eye on is uh, things like the number of effective SKUs. You know, if you end up with 15, 16 websites and you know, 40 store views and you've got 50,000 SKUs, it starts to, you know, the system starts to be tested. So we were approached um, uh, in the UK, we've got uh, what are called employee uh, benefit schemes. Um, and they exist in, in Ireland as well, but there's a tax incentive in the UK. So this company has that type of product and they wanted to use um, Magento, but they didn't, we're talking about hundreds of schemes and quite a large range of SKUs available. So we, we turned it around and we've actually built a system where you have one website, one store, one store view, but you have a, what's called a portals configurator. So you can create any scheme, give it a URL, and off it goes. So it's really scalable and seriously performant. And this is just an example of the admin panel. So these are all the portals that you're setting up. And each one of these will have their own access. And then that scheme obviously goes out to uh, an employer and their, their users log in and use the system. But the beauty of this is we're not involved at all. We just, we facilitate the creation of the portal and then they manage it. There's no setting up of new website store views. Off it goes. So it's, it's, you can have thousands and uh, it's great. And then obviously you can, you can tweak. It depends on what you need. You know, some schemes, for example, might have a less, a smaller product set, but that, they're the specifics of, of uh, each implementation. Last but not least, site performance. We know we're all uh, getting fairly familiar with the Lighthouse Score, Core Web Vitals, you know, uh, page speeds, insights, you know, a lot of this driven by Google, obviously. You know, we're all looking for this, we're, we're looking for this great, a great score. Um, this is the great debate uh, at the moment. You know, in, in the Adobe land, they talk about composable commerce. Um, headless was a thing. But the old-fashioned monolith, you know, where, you know, fr the back end and front end are quite close together. Well, this is still fine if you know what you're doing. Uh, you know, most systems 
most, most implementations will be absolutely fine with, with monolith. It's still okay to use. Um, and that's it. We'll, we'll just leave it there on that. But I just want to come back to this. Um, uh, at the Adobe Partner um, Tour event in London, there was a guy talking about Adobe Experience Manager, which is their content sites builder. And he went on to talk about site performance, and they were having issues with the product. And I'm sure it was, you know, customer feedback. So they rebuilt it, um, the front end part of it. And they, they created what's called edge delivery services. So that is now the new front end of Adobe Experience Manager. Um, and Ever since Adobe acquired uh, Magento Commerce, they've been trying to figure out a way of how do, we, how do we bring these two cousins closer together. And they used to have this, what's called a commerce integration framework, which has now been uh, ditched. And now they've created this edge delivery services. So I'm just making you aware of, kind of this is new emerging technology. Um, and uh, this chap, John, has the enviable task of building, uh, it, building uh, commerce into uh, edge delivery services. And these are just some of the um, benefits of that. It's still very early days. B2B is, uh, we're, we're starting to talk to them about the B2B side of things um, because that is a little bit further down the road. But it's good to know what's out there and what's, what's, what's coming. Um, last but not least, in terms of site performance, um, we are uh, big fans of these guys. Um, they came along, the, you know, the, the, what, was, what was really interesting, back in the days Magento, when Magento 2 was launched, we had, uh, I've got my one minute warning, thank you. Um, uh, and this is the last slide, so good. Um, we had the Luma theme. And the Luma theme originally was created as a demo theme, but it became, it became the default. Um, so, uh, back to the old monolith, and you know um, the, the the platform was crying out for a new front end theme, um, and Hoover came along, and they first created Hoover Themes, uh, which was amazing, and now they cover the whole Adobe Commerce product, um, including B two B, and now they have their own implementation of Hoover Checkout. So uh, thanks to these guys, uh, it's, it's it's a great product. But as you've seen on the previous slide, we also have this edge delivery services coming along. So there's a lot of exciting stuff uh, happening in the world of Adobe. That is it, my friends. Any questions? You were so gripped. You're so, so, <laughs> so stunned by that. Uh, uh, or maybe you were just thinking about the bread. Uh, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, um, but yeah, please uh, find me any, at any point today. Um, and I'm happy to go into any of those kind of implements. There's lots of other stuff that didn't make it into these slides, but uh, uh, I'm very open and honest about the, the platform. And uh, yeah, come and talk to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.